it's got me perplexed as to why every country on earth doesn't simply stop what they're doing and go and address the situation in Fukushima because it's not just affecting Japan. It's affecting the entire planet. It is absolutely out of control what's happening in Fukushima. It's far exceeded the levels that were released by Chernobyl already and it is continuing to melt down. We have three reactors at least in a state of total meltdown and they're right on the edge of the Pacific Ocean. And they're going to pollute the entire global ocean system if the people of the world do not take the matter in hand. The only way we're going to be able to take the matter in hand, folks, is if we start holding our governments accountable and start requiring our governments to act in the best interest of the people rather than in the best interest of the corporations that the criminals within our governments are currently supporting. And I have no qualms in saying that. And it just goes without saying for the politicians we have in Australia here. I mean, Julia Gillard, our Prime Minister, is probably one of the most corrupt women that human consciousness has ever spawned. She is an utter disgrace to both her gender and to the entire human race. And she's also a barefaced liar, folks, so she has absolutely no credibility whatsoever. They get me a little bit irate, folks, these politicians, and it's not just the Australian politicians, it's global politicians. I do get a little bit mad when I think about them. But even in doing so, and even in calling them criminals, and even recognising Julia Gillard as being the corrupt disgrace and blight on humanity that she is, I don't wish to harm her for being that way. I can appreciate that she is the way she is because she has a completely distorted view of reality. She has a complete misconception of, of what she is and of what this planet and what the human race is. And she has been trained by the system itself to be the sociopath that she is. I mean, let's face it, folks, she's a lawyer. And lawyers are a special breed of person. They truly are. I mean, for a start, all lawyers don't care about the human race because they have a superseding oath to serve the Bar Association above all other things. So I would suggest that even having a lawyer as a Prime Minister is an utter conflict of interests because obviously she's got a superseding oath to serve someone else who is not the Australian people, and that is the Bar Association. And she's sworn by that oath to always uphold statute law. And statute law is fiction. Statute law only applies to public servants. So I can see why Julia Gillard is the sociopath that she is. And I don't judge her or wish to harm her for being what she is. And I don't really care about what she's done in the past. I don't care what any of these politicians have done in the past, folks. What I care about is what they do from this moment forward. And I don't wish to prosecute or jail or harm any of these people. I simply want them to come home. I want them to come back to reality. I want them to remember who and what they are and to re-merge with the human race that they belong to. Stop raping this planet. Stop raping human consciousness. Stop acting in breach of the trust that is given to them by the people that they are sworn to serve. Because, I mean, it's all out of balance, folks. All of these people are public servants. It's fascinating when you really look at the human race and you realize how many people we actually are and how we stand in fear of this tiny little group of servants who have taken over the mansion. It's fascinating. It's fascinating that we don't simply stand up and administrate our own affairs and hold these servants accountable for their actions and, and hold them in breach of trust. And again, all we have to do is dismiss them. We don't have to hurt them. We just simply have to stop the direction this species is going in because if we don't stop it, well, we're not going to have a species, folks, because we're not going to have a planet. And what species we do have is going to be locked into a completely totalitarian system. I mean, it's going to make Nazi Germany or communist Russia look like a Sunday school picnic, what these people have planned for the human race. And it's happening because we will not face the shadow within ourselves and stand up and fix it. 
And as I've so often said, this is only going to happen once we address what we believe it is that divides us from our neighbours, because there is no division. The only thing that's different between you and your neighbours is their perspective of reality. And look, I know I repeat myself on these shows, folks, but when are we going to stand up and, and fix this problem? Because the answer is so ridiculously simple, and I can see no point looking for another answer when this is the only answer that there is. And it's such a simple answer. It's such a simple remedy. There need be no violence, no guns, no protests, no forms to fill out, no one to conquer, no one to hurt, just a mass movement of compassionate non-compliance. It's very, very simple, folks. And I think that all of the things that we're facing on the planet, especially the fracking, is giving us an opportunity to step into this role. I see fracking almost as if consciousness is giving humanity an ultimatum and saying, well, look, you've got to face the fear, folks, and if you don't face it, well, we're going to destroy the water table and you're not going to have any water, so there won't be any life on the planet. So ultimately, folks, we have a choice to either face our fear and connect with those around us and then stand up and face our servants and put them back into their proper role as trustees or to allow ourselves to be exterminated due to our failure to face this fear and our willingness to abide by statute law, which is simply a bunch of lines written on pieces of paper that have been put there by sociopaths to prevent us from ever holding them accountable for their actions and putting them back in their rightful position in society, which is that of public trustees. That's the choice, folks. That's the choice we have. So are you going to sit there and wait to ascend to fifth dimension? Or are you going to sit there and wait for Christ to come and save you? Are you going to sit there and wait for Isa to come? Are you going to wait for Comet Ellen to impact the earth and all of the other things that are put there to distract you? Are you going to wait for 2012 to see what happens on December 21st? Or are you going to turn and address the shadow within yourself and then stand up and address the situation that we as a species are facing? And I know I'll get attacked for that, folks. There's been relentless attacks coming at me from Christians lately because I've been so blasphemous as to suggest that a little personal responsibility may be in order. And of course, when people criticize me for suggesting that they take responsibility, they tend to attack with ad hominid attacks and logical fallacies, such as they'll bring up other topics, they'll talk about chemtrails, they'll talk about harp and all sorts of things like this to draw you off down these little side tangents and keep you arguing about the aluminium content in soil rather than staying focused on the problem that we face which is our failure to face the shadow in ourselves and hold the criminal trustees in control of this planet accountable for their actions, because that's the bottom line. And all of these other things are simply distractions to prevent people from ever looking at the actual situation and realizing that it's all about personal responsibility. That's how we fix the whole thing. Because once people choose to step into their roles as human beings and hold these trustees accountable for their actions, we can fix every single problem this planet currently faces. And so that is the perspective that people need to look at things from. But it is never going to be achieved until people actually realize that they are responsible for their own lives, they are responsible for the predicament the world faces, and that they are actually free to make change whenever they wish to make it. All they have to do is break down the barriers between themselves and their neighbours, start respecting each other, and stand up and say no. I think we can do it, folks. I really do feel that we can do it. I think the human race will rise to the occasion, and we will address the problems that we're facing and we will find a remedy for the problems that we're facing. I do really believe there are a lot of people around the planet who are ready to stand up and face this situation from a centre of compassion. I feel that many are just waiting to see someone else stand up first. 
I think there are millions and millions of people out there who want change, but it's very difficult for them to all connect with each other. So perhaps we need some sort of central hub where we can do that. But the problem is that even within the truth movement, there are so many people who follow the path laid out for them by others and who argue amongst each other over who's right and who's not and which direction we should be taking. I personally believe that there is only one direction to take and that is facing the fear within ourselves that prevents us from uniting as community and holding our trustees accountable. I really do believe that's the only method that will ever work because one has to understand that they are free and they have to stand in that power because until they do that, they never will be free. And a good example of that is all of the revolutions that we've had in the past because none of them have really achieved anything. Not if you look at the world today, they haven't. Because human consciousness was never evolved enough to believe that it was free when it staged these revolutions. And immediately after doing so, we looked for a new form of government when really all we need is not government, but a group of administrators who administer the infrastructure for us and who do so in the manner that is directed to them to do by the people. And I think it's about break time here, folks, so I'll leave it there for now, and we'll go and have a break. Thank you for listening.